Hey everyone, um, so stable sounds for major, minor, and dominant. Um, since those are the three basic sounds in most music, um, there's variations on all of those, like a minor six chord or a minor seven flat five, um, or, you know, um, major seven sharp five or you know on and on and on dominus seven you know sharp five or you know there's so many different ways to kind of manipulate those three basic sounds but uh i thought i would just talk about in case you know for those that maybe don't know about this um you know there's there's three main tonalities that work with the basic versions of those and um, so I thought it would just I don't know how about the key of G um, just talk about the three sounds um, so G major let me get a So, um, uh, Lydian is one of the, for major, uh, Lydian is a stable sound. None of, what, what, by the way, what I mean by stable is that none of the functions within the tonality need to be resolved. Um, some are going to create more tension than others, but, those ten, but the tensions that are available, uh, the three tensions in each one of these, um, are fine are, are cool you know you can really just hang on them and um, the bright one in Lydian as maybe we all know is uh, the sharp 11 the sharp 4 it's bright um, but it's nice so um, that sharp 11 it's kind of nice up there as opposed to the straight major scale which has four natural four Really, you know, that four really wants to resolve to three. Uh, whereas the sharp 11, as I was kind of uh, illustrating there, can just hang there and, uh, and it sounds good. Um, let's see, so minor, uh, I'll just do a minor sound. So Lydian, one, two, one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, for a stable major sound. And, you know, really, that means that you can use it, like if you just, you know, are deciding to just jam in G major, use that as your tonal basis. And you can use other notes, of course, as I've talked about in other videos, uh, you could really add anything to that. But to have that kind of as your, as your base, um, then you just know that those notes are all stable. Um, I mean, you can use the major scale as your base, of course, but you just have to, you know work with that fourth degree a little bit more um and then minor uh the dorian scale one two flat three four five six flat seven um let's see So the bright one in this is six, right there.
11. It's kind of a Coltrane thing there at the end. Didn't mean to. Um, but yeah, Dorian, great one. Um, you know, to reference established styles that use Dorian, uh, one is funk. Um, funk musicians really like Dorian. Because, you know, I mean, a lot of funk stuff, uh, there's a lot of funk stuff anyways, where it's just a one chord jam, um, or one chord sound. Um, like, for instance, Sissy Strut uh, by The Meters. It's just C. Dorian the whole, for the whole tune. Um, and, um, yeah, it's a great sound. I mean, as soon as you play, um, not that I have a funky sound, but... Um, you know, horrible version of funk over here, but, um, you know, that's, that's six in there with the voicing, the G minor voicing, um, it's funky, um, but, you know, jazz musicians use Dorian too, a lot, um, so do, um, other types of musicians, um, but it works great because it's stable for, for like a one chord thing, or moving too, you know, it's just, it's not functioning in any particular key other than itself, you know, it's not like G minor in the key of E flat or something, then you would probably not use G Dorian if it's functioning in the key of E flat, you know, but if it's just G minor, sustained there for even like a full four bars or something. Um, Dorian is a great one. And then uh, for dominant seven, uh, while there's plenty of great flavors like I've talked about for uh, dominant seven sound, this one's um, stable. So it's, you know, it's the dominant version of uh, Lydian. One, two, three, sharp, four, five, six, flat seven. Flat seven for the, um, the dominant sound. Um, so uh let's pick let's pick C C seven instead of G just to change it up here. Um let's see, I don't know. I'm gonna rush that. Yeah, it's a little rushed. Let me redo that. That's better. Yep. All right. So uh, yeah, Lydian sharp four. No. Lydian dominant is what a lot of people call this. I call this mixolydian sharp four uh, because it's functioning for a dominant chord, and uh, mixolydian is associated with dominant chords. So I just prefer that as a, a label. But you'll read other people or hear other musicians call it or refer to it as the Lydian dominant scale. Um, you know, Lydian scale accommodated for the dominant chord by flatting the seven. Um, I'm kind of a stickler with the, the labels, you know, um, because I think it can be helpful to label things as you are kind of uh, associating them or kind of thinking about them rather than just going with whatever name other people call it, you know. If another name makes more sense to you, then, then use that. Um, anyway, so, yeah, Mixolydian sharp four. So, yeah, you get that, um, you know, so again, it's one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven. This is sharp 11. pocket that was terrible. Yep, 
Yeah, not great because I'm kind of like trying to focus on highlighting that sharp eleven and whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, Lydian or mix Lydian sharp four, as I like to call it. Um, so Lydian for major, Dorian for minor, and uh, mix Lydian sharp four are the three uh, stable sounds that you can use for for those chord types. And um, you know, I mean, again, you can use mixolydian, which has natural four. You just have to resolve that four if you want it to sound good, I think. Or somehow f figure out a way so that the four sounds good. I mean, you can get into that, too. Like the four. Or let's go to that three. Sharp eleven. Like, I could have resolved up to the fifth, but just by itself, it's cool, you know. Um, anyways, yeah, I thought I would just share that with you guys for anybody that um, doesn't know about this aspect of. Um, playing over those chord types, uh, you know, those basic uh, three main types of sounds that uh, exist in music, um, in tonal Western music, let's put it that way. Um, and yeah, you know, if you have any questions, of course, uh, feel free to, to ask them um, or any comments you might have about this. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I use tons of other scales or tonalities, sounds, for those types of sounds, I mean, regularly, a lot, actually. Um, but again, just, it's nice to know that these three are there for a stable sound that you can kind of rely on for that. And um, I, I have noticed with a lot of students, to my surprise, um, they find six in Dorian, it sounds wrong to them. Um, and I just tell them, give it time, um, let it kind of absorb you know let your ear absorb it and get used to it and very often that'll that'll um, take care of it as far as hearing it in a way that makes sense um, and I'll, and when I do the funk chord thing um, or if it's up here for C Dorian you know they instantly go, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds right, you know? So sometimes context can, that's the thing, like context and also like how you're using it, you know, if you're just getting going with some of these sounds, uh, because your ear hasn't gotten used to them, um, you're not quite sure how to use it. And uh, and that's what makes anything really sound good is, is um, knowing how to make it sound good, you know? Um, but with these scales, it really doesn't take that much effort to make them sound good because, like I said, they're they're cool. They're they're nice. They're nice sounds. Um, but um, anyways, I'll leave it there. Hope that was helpful. Um, and uh, if you haven't given these a try, I recommend it. All right, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you uh, soon. Thanks.